So in this tutorial, we are going to examine Java's exception handling mechanism. So let me first define what an exception is. So an exception is an abnormal condition. So exception is an abnormal condition. that arises in our code sequence that arises in our code sequence or that arises in our code at runtime so there are two things uh, that you should focus in this definition one is the abnormal condition and the second word is the runtime so basically an exception in other words an exception is a runtime error so it is a runtime error in short words so in this tutorial we are going to study how uh, java will handle the exceptions which are encountered at runtime so in most computer languages that do not support exception handling uh, errors must be checked and handled manually uh, typically through the use of the error codes and uh, this is a cumbersome or a troublesome uh, procedure so java's exception handling avoids these problems and in the process brings runtime error management into the object oriented world so basically what is a java exception a java exception a java exception is an object so java exception is an object that describes that describes that abnormal condition so if uh, you have an java exception it means that it is an object that will particularly describe that exceptional condition exceptional condition So let's suppose you create a program and uh, it it will run uh, at the compile time first it will be compiled by your compiler and uh, that code at compile time does not yields any type of error but at the runtime uh, let's suppose uh, the program is taking some user inputs and let's suppose the user at the runtime gives some inputs that will yield some error in your program then that will be an exception because it is occurring at the runtime and so java exception handling or java manages these runtime errors using these keywords we will write our program and we will see what these keywords actually do so they are the try catch throw then throws and then there is finally so in this lesson we are going to cover uh, try and catch in the next part we are going to cover throw throws and finally so basically uh, an object that represents uh, that uh, the whenever an exception condition arises at the runtime an object will represent that exception right so what java does is whenever it encounters a condition an abnormal condition or an exception at the runtime it creates an object that represents that exception and that object particularly describes what that exception condition is so exception can be generated by the java runtime or can be manually generated by our code using try and catch 
So uh, briefly, uh, here is how it works. So if you have some program statements, so let's suppose you have a program and you have written some statements in it. Let's suppose you have written five statements in it. So when you have written statements in a program you are, and you want to monitor that whether these statements will contain some exception in it, what you are simply going to do is you are going to put them in a try statement. So try and followed by the curly braces. So now we want to monitor these statements, whether these statements contain an exception or not. So if these program statements can uh, behave abnormally uh, at the runtime, then what we're going to do is we're going to catch that exception using the catch keyword followed by two circular braces and in these two circular braces we are going to mention the exception name so in java each and each and every exception has a name associated with it and since uh, it will be a class with the exception name you can create an object and then you can perform some operation in the cache statement Right, so we are going to, we will write a program in a, uh, in a later bit. Uh, we will uh, run it and we will catch an exception also. So we will uh, see this in this in the Eclipse IDE. But before that, I want to uh, show you a very important top level, top level exception hierarchy. So I want to show you the top level exception hierarchy. So all exception types are the subclasses of a built in class throwable. So there is a super class throwable and it contains all the exception that can uh, that can occur in your program, right? So the superclass contains the names of all those exception and uh, thus this throwable is at the top of the exception class hierarchy and immediately below this throwable there are two subclasses that partition exception into distinct branches like this. So on one branch there is the error which is encountered at the compile time and on this side there is exception which is encountered at the runtime right so these are the two uh, branches one branch is headed by exception and this class is used to for exceptional condition that the user programs should catch and uh, this, uh, since this is a runtime exception, there is a subclass of the runtime exception. And there are similarly a lot of uh, classes, subclasses of this exception superclass that contains all the exceptions. And we are going to refer them in here. Right, so now we know what an exception is, we know the exceptional hierarchy. So now let's uh, take an example of, uh, now let's program it and let's see how a program can encounter an exception or an error in the runtime. So let's move on to the Eclipse IDE now. So let's create two variables in here, A and B. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to write this program where it takes uh, input values from the user, uh, two input values basically, one is the A and another one is the B. And when it will take uh, these two values, then we are going to print the 
uh, we were, we're going to divide these two values right so enter value a and then we are going to write enter value b so if you want to take an input from the user you will have to use the scanner class and to use the scanner class you will have to import java dot util dot scanner and now you will have to create an object of this scanner class like this and in this you will have to provide it with a constructor that is system dot n so now we have created a scanner class which will take input from the user so we are going to assign this input to the value a so we are going to use the scan object dot next end so next it int function is basically used to convert uh, the uh, the whatever you are going to write in the console it will convert it into an integer since a is also an integer so we are going to to do the same with the value b so you can see that uh, in this program we have not done anything much we have just created a scanner class which is taking the input from the user uh, at the runtime right so after taking inputs what we're just going to do is we are going to print the division of the two values here like this so let's run this program when we will run this program i will also write uh, I will input two values and let's see uh, will this program run correctly or will it yield some error So you can see that this program uh, run correctly. Uh, we have input, uh, we have uh, taken the value of a as 34 and b as 2. So it gives an output uh, for uh, 17. So now what I'm just going to do is you, you can see that this program runs fine in the uh, run time and pile time. So now what I'm just going to do is let's suppose there is a user who inputs the value of b as 0. And we know that uh, anything divided by zero is not defined, right? So let me just run this program again and input value zero. And then we will see how this exception, because this will happen in the runtime here. So let's see how Java uh, will automatically handle this exception. So you can see here that when you enter the value of b as 0, it gives it, it throws an exception in the thread main, which is an arithmetic ex exception. And it says division by 0, exception name is division by 0, sorry, exception name is arithmetic exception. And this is an object which describes that exception as division by 0. And you can see that uh, it also describes where this exception is occurring. Uh, it is occurring in the test package. Thinkx is the name of the class. Main is the name of function and on line 14, which is this line, this error, uh, this exception has occurred. So this is how Java will report the error in the, in the runtime. 
but now what we want to do is uh, you can see that this looks ugly uh, it will just if you will run this program in the production line uh, it will look very ugly because the user will not understand this exception right because we are programmers we know what this exception means but maybe the user will not know that so what i'm just going to do is since we want to monitor these statements i'm going to put all of them in the try block So you can see I've put all of them in the try block. All these statements are in try block and we are going to monitor all of them. So whenever this, we know that this line number 15 is giving the exception, arithmetic exception is the name of the exception. So what we're going to do is we are now going to catch it manually. And we know the name is the arithmetic exception. So the name of the class is arithmetic exception. And we're going to assign it to, we're going to re take a reference E. And in this line, we are going to say that value of B cannot be zero. So let's run this program and see uh, how it will work. We are monitoring these statements in the try block and whenever the JVM will encounter any exception, it will throw that exception. And whenever it throws that exception, this catch block will catch it and it will store it in the exception E. So uh, you can even add this exception E in here. So value of zero cannot be, uh, value of B cannot be zero. So let's run this. So you can see here, it says value of B cannot be zero. And it also, uh, E is uh, pointing, E is the description of this exception and it says division by zero. So this is how you try and you catch exceptions. So uh, let's suppose in these statements, uh, there is some more exceptions. So you can also catch more than one exception by introducing more catch statements after this. So let me just create an example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array and I'm going to assign some values in this array, one comma two comma three comma four, like this. And now I'm going to uh, make an error here. We know that uh, I'm going to assign the value at index position seven as 34. We know that we have created an array which has four elements in it. So the index positions are from zero to three. So there is no index position as seven here. So this will be an runtime exception. So let's see what will be the type of this exception. Let's run this program. So you can see here, okay, so it has not caught that exception. So let me write it like this. So what I'm going to do here is instead of writing this in the try state, I'm going to write it after the try cast statement. So let's run this program and see. So now you can see here that uh, it has caught an exception in the main class which says array index out of bounds exception. So now we know that it is an array index out of bounds class. 
So it describes that index 7 is out of bounds for four. Because you can see here the array was having length as 4 and you are accessing the 7th position which is index out of bounds 0. So what I'm just going to do is I'm now going to replace it in the try statement and now I'm going to catch this exception name of the exception is it's big array index out of bounds exception we're going to store the reference in the e so here i'm going to write i'm man i'm manually catching this exception and i will write here array index or i should write here cannot access position position 7 and after this I will display the exception here so you can see here we are now uh, catching two exceptions uh, in the same try block so in the try block uh, you have some problem statements which can have more than one exception so this is how you're going to catch these exceptions so let's run this program and see the what will happen in the output So now you can see that it is saying value of b cannot be 0. So it has not caught this exception maybe because I have not closed the scan dot close. We will have to close it. So you can see here that it is only displaying the arithmetic exception and the reason is that uh, it will break this line it will not even come to this line so let us ignore this arithmetic exception in the output so now you can see here that uh, when whenever you encounter an, an exception the JVM will not run the statements uh, after this statement so now you can see here since uh, there is no error no exception in runtime on this line it will come to this line and it will catch this exception out of bounds so this is how you can catch more than one exception in the try block uh, one another way of doing this is you can also create a nested try block here And what you will have to do is you will have to catch it after this exception right here so you can create a nested try cast statement also so it will uh, try this also so let's run this okay so we will have to write it so yeah you, uh, it is same but it is nested so it will be easier for um, for any programmer to know which part of the problem statement is actually uh, yielding some exception so this is how we try and catch exceptions in uh, java and it is very important to handle these exceptions because you know these exception uh, will occur at the runtime so uh, if the user is running your program and he and there is any error at the runtime 
it will lead to more crashes so this is how uh, we uh, we have done the try and catch statement blocks and now in the next part we are going to learn three more uh, keywords which is the throw throws and finally they all are very important so we will cover them using our program we will use a program in the eclipse ide and we will run it so thanks for watching